Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Dragnić and in this video tutorial I'm gonna show you how you can give to each and every single one of your particles in the particle system a unique, distinct color. You might remember that in the past if we wanted to, let's say, add a multicolored uh, particle system to our scene, we will have first to create some objects like UV sphere, for example, we will have to duplicate the objects and then we will have to assign to each and every single of those duplicate objects a new material. So let's say a red material for that, that sphere, let's say a green material for that sphere, let's say an orange material for that sphere, and so on so forth. Then you will have to select the objects, you will have to, to group them, and then you will have to select your particle system, your emitter, and to go over here to the particle system, and you will have to assign from the render uh, tab over here the group option. And then you will have to select the group of objects. Now, if I render, you can see I have some, some colors here in my particles, but this method was really very limited, restricted. You will have to take a lot of steps, many steps, to get to a result that uh, would be rather not so uh, satisfactory, if you prefer. But today I'm going to show you how we can set up a very simple node setup in the Psyx render that allows us to have thousands of colors to our particles. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So let me really quick delete those spheres here and I want to show you my uh, particle system here. So let me tell you a few words about my particle system here. This is my simple plane emitter. If I play back the animation, you can see that I have my particles going upwards. Why? Because if you go over here to the particles context button, I have set from the field weights panel, I have set the gravity down to zero. So I have no gravity influence here. Now I want to change a few things here in my particle system. First of all, I want to go to the physics uh, tab here and I want to play around with the damp factor. So I give it some damp, damp here, maybe a little less than that. All right, now you can see that my particles have been concentrated around this area here. This is what I want. Now I want to assign to my particles a duplicate object instead of a group. So I'm heading over to the render tab, over here to the object, I'm selecting object and already I have assigned the sphere, otherwise you could go ahead and assign your object of preference. All right, now if I switch over from the display tab to the rendered view, you can see that this is how it looks my system, my particle system for the moment. I have also uh, disabled the emitter rendering from here, from over here, from the render panel, you can see, and also I have given to the size of my objects some variation here, okay, a random size. So that's about my system. So now let's go ahead and add a multicolored material to this particles so that each and every single one of those particles has its own unique distinct color. All right, so first of all, I need to add the material to my particle system. So I'm heading over to the materials context and clicking new and I'm giving to the material the name multicolor. All right, for the moment, this material is nothing more than a simple diffuse material with a white color. So if I now try out the render of my scene, you can see that nothing very special. We have our nice spheres here rendered as white colored ones. So now I'm going over here into the node editor. So 
I want to start building uh, my material. First of all, inside the render, we have a new node, rel relatively new node, which is called particle info node. So I'm, I, I'm adding a particle info node okay, to my node editor. You can see that the particle info node has some gray sockets here and some blue ones. The gray sockets have scalar, as we call them, values, just, uh, you know, single values. Whereas the blue ones have what we call vector uh, values. So they have to do, like velocity, they have to do with uh, vector math. And, uh, for example, velocity can be described by three uh, coordinates, uh, three vectors, if you prefer, three components. So. For the moment, I'm interested in this topmost index uh, socket. This socket, as you can see, it's, it writes index. And let me show you something. If I select my particle system and I'm heading over to the particle system context button, if I change the visualization of my from the display tab to something like point or circle or cross, it doesn't matter let's say point, and if I select and check the button number here, you can see the button here's number, you can see that now in my scene I can see a bunch of numbers, okay? Each one of those numbers is unique. Every single particle has been assigned a unique index number, which is uh, really interesting. So. If I can read the information here, if I can get this unique number, the index number, I can uh, make it to make something useful, to get something useful out of all this. So that's what I'm going to do. And we have this uh, functionality here in the particles info node inside the render uh, material editor. So let me switch over to the rendered view display here. And I'm heading over to the, uh, to the node editor again. And now I'm going to add, by hitting Shift A, a converter math node. Why am I doing this? Let me show you. If you take a closer look to the numbers here, you can see that they have, most of them, three digits. All right? So if you see over here the number of my particles in this particular system, particle system, is 500, which means that the maximum index number will be 500. This is something very important, as you are going to see in just a moment. So, let me continue. I want now to add the most important node of my node setup here, which is going to be a color hue saturation node. As you can see, the hue saturation node has a hue slider. The hue, meaning the color, okay, has a gray input socket on the left here, that one. So it can read a single value, a, sc a scalar, uh, you know, value. But if you take a closer look at the hue slider here, which defines the color output actually, it has a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one. So the range of values is between 0 and 1, given the fact that the index number that I'm going to get from the index output here, socket, is going to be between 0 and 500 for my particular particle system, I need to normalize, well, you can say that so, in a way to normalize or to downsize this index number so that it can be read read by the hue slider here. So that's why I am using the math node in the middle. So next thing I want to do is to connect the index gray output socket to the top socket of the math node. I want to change the operation to divide. And I want to set a denominator, something like 100, given what I told you just before. Now I want to connect the gray output socket of the math node to the hue input socket, hue slider 
input socket of the hue saturation value node and then to connect the uh, color output uh, socket to the color input socket of my diffuse material. So that was pretty much about it. A very simple node setup. And you might need to start out with giving it by giving it a certain color, like a red one maybe. Alright, it doesn't matter actually. Next thing I want to do is to try out the render and see what's going on here. So you can see already, if I maximize the window here, that we have uh, tens of colors here. Right? Probably we have a big part of the color spectrum. So if you if you are going for a multicolored particle system, I would suggest this is the way for you to go. All right. So now you can play around with uh, some variations here of this method. Okay. As I told you before, the issue slider has a range between zero and one, but I told you also that it has a cyclic function. So the hue slider here starts from the one edge of the spectrum and goes all the way to the other edge of the spectrum. But on the color wheel, the two edges of the spectrum are next to each other. So having that in mind, we can play around with different values for the denominator of the math node. And we are going to get different results. For example, if I set a number of 10, something really low, okay, a low value, let me try out to render. You can see, now we have this result here. The colors have some greater variation, whereas the higher you set this value here, let's say, let, let me try something like 500 maybe, and it seems kind of like the higher the value, the particles are grouped into groups of color. All right, so you have something like parts of color here, not something like unique colors that are mixed together. So now if I try a higher value, let's say 1000, all right, now let me try out the render. So you can see now we have a more limited range of colors, okay? So we have this result now. Of course, you can start from a different color, from a blue, let's say, so you can get, you, you, you want to, in general, you want to play around with all those, uh, you know, the color and the denominator in the math, uh, of the math node. So that was pretty much about it. I think that this method is much more flexible and gives you much better results compared to the other method, the old method, where we had to apply materials to duplicate, uh, you know, objects and then we will have to group them together and assign to the particle system a group, uh, you know, uh, render option here. With this method, you can get really multicolored particles, each one of them having its own unique color if you use the right denominator given the amount of particles you have set to your particle system. So, that concludes our tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from this. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with a hopefully interesting topic, hopefully soon. Until then, have fun and goodbye.